All right. Today's Wednesday, and our video today, uh, first of all, we'll start with um, kind of the assignments for today. Of course, you got to watch the video up there, but also completing AP Classroom FRQ options, or if you still have some in Schoology, you can do those too. Here's the way the rest of the week is going to go for FRQs. Um, there is not going to be a specific FRQ assigned per day. So it's going to be your option as to choose and pick which ones you are doing. Uh, for those 12 to 15 people that have been very consistent, that have been working every day and doing your FRQs within 24 to 48 hours the whole time, uh, I would just ask that you guys, you do what you need to do, um, trying to do at least an FRQ a day, but kind of choosing what is going to help you the most, maybe practicing from some FRQs in the past, practicing from some questions that you, your friends make up or that I can help you make up to get you ready for Monday, to give you as much flexibility as possible. For those people who have at any point fell behind and you know you still have a lot of FRQs you need to get done to have any chance of getting your B or A for the nine weeks, then this gives you the opportunity to do three or four, as long as you do them well, not just rush through them a day, but at the same time, more importantly, get prepared for this exam. So you have you have flexibility in your plans for FRQs over the next few days since they're not going to be like have a designated date on each of them. And I'll score them as they as they come in as best I can. Uh, we'll also do practices in our Zooms at 1130 and 1:30 today. It may not be a whole FRQ. They may be parts of an FRQ. We may look at ideas from FRQs. Uh, I really have enjoyed it because this has felt a little bit more like class in that some of our conversations and discussions and hearing your problems when you do miss something. Uh, one thing that, you know, it, it, it's almost been, it's almost been encouraging for me on the Zooms to hear people mess up. And a lot of you want to apologize. And I'm thinking, no, this is, this is what you know, learning and teaching is all about. And unfortunately, those of you not getting to join or not joining in at least and asking questions to follow up your FRQs, you're missing that. And that is the crucial part of getting better and getting ready for this exam. Uh, I had a note on Schoology last night. If you haven't read it, please do so when I updated when the Zooms were going to be. And uh, it was about the fact that everybody not interacting on an almost daily basis is seeing a decline, just about everybody in their skill level performance and their chances on this test are declining by the day. And that's just reality. You know, I told you in here from day one that I was going to be real with you. And that's the reality. And the only improvements I see are from a few people within the, within the group that's being pretty consistent right now and participating on a daily basis. Okay. So please try schedule a chance. This is, you know, make some sacrifices, ask your family, hey, I really need to do this. This is thousands of dollars. This is credit. And most importantly, um, it's a it's a decision you're making that I'm not going to quit and I'm going to fight through. And I think that's bigger than anything because you'll, you, you know, that's something that you're going to want to set a precedent for hopefully for years to come. And uh, again, it, it just really bothers me and how many people right now seem to be putting up the surrender sign. And that that really discourages me. Um, but hopefully, again, some people will try at the last minute. At this point, that's about the only chance for, for them. Try at the last minute to put in some extra work. Uh, keep studying. Encourage each other. Study by groups. Uh, we will be having another Zoom tomorrow night at 7. So if not Zooms work better for people, please let them know. And again, any computer problems, the school is open from 8 to 1 each day. Uh, for you to come into Freshman Academy, get that computer looked at, get it fixed. If the demo site is not working for you, you need to get it fixed, your computer fixed, because that's how you got to take the test. And that is a immediate need, like has to be done now. Uh, also, related to um, testing, make sure you filled out the survey that I put online a couple days ago. That is going to be taken off probably sometime today. If you've not filled that in then uh, you have, you're going to have some misinformation. Also, if you uh, watch the exam video, I need a verification from you on the discussion thread at the bottom of the materials, or you can send me a message that says, hey, I've watched the video. We do have a lot more people who have watched the video based on views. 
That's a good sign, uh, but we're still missing 25. Not a good sign. But I only have like 25 signatures of people who said they've watched it. So I have a feeling some of you maybe didn't watch it closely because right at the end it says what you have to do to verify you've watched the video. I need that verification. I will continue making phone calls today in order to make sure that we've got that and everybody knows kind of what's going on. Uh, one thing I did want to bring up today in the video that we had not talked about is something called in agriculture called fair trade. And I wanted to take a look at this. What it is is on the screen, a definition. It's fair trade is a global movement. It started, it was started by groups of people in different countries around the world, mostly the rich world, but also from the poor world, to try to help small producers, like local level producers in less developed countries make more money out of the type of products they produced. It's not just used in farming, but it is something that is popular in farming, such as coffee growing and stuff like that. So here's the whole deal. Here's a great review of something too. Commercial agriculture, we know, is beginning to dominate the world. It's efficient, it mass produces, it does have its problems, environmental challenges, stuff like that. But so many small farmers in the world are being pushed off their land because they can't compete with the big farms. They're getting bought out by the big farms. And so at the end of the day, they don't have any options to stay in business. They, they usually sell out and then become workers on those big farms. Or they could possibly run an organic farm because the demand for organic goods is really high and they can get a good price for them. And organic requires a small scale. But one other thing that small farmers might turn to, not in the United States, not in Japan, not in Europe, but in LDCs, the less developed countries, could be fair trade. Now, I'm going to give you a real short version of how this works. And if you have follow-up questions, then please ask. I'll be glad to answer those. But fair trade organizations are what we call NGOs. NGO stands for non-governmental organization. So no government bodies are the ones putting this in place. <laughs> because of globalization, the Internet, social media, when people support a cause around the world, they can rally together and create their own organizations, much like this. So what do these people in a fair trade organization want? They want to produce a product that has a sticker on it, like the ones you see on the screen, that certifies the people producing this product have agreed to certain conditions of how they will treat their workers, how much they will pay their workers, and the fact that you know the investment, if you buy this product, the money is going to go back to that less developed country in that local area where the coffee or whatever it was, was grown. So these organizations also promote cooperatives, meaning a bunch of small farmers getting together and buying maybe rights in a trucking or shipping company. So when they sell their product to whatever place in the world, they don't have to pay a big commercial company to haul their product. They cut the middleman out. So what this does is by putting fair trade, think about the words fair, the idea of making trade more fair for people who often don't get a whole lot out of it. That's the whole idea that there's money brought back to these less developed countries more so than normally would be. So maybe you've got 10 small farmers growing coffee on small plots of land. They're never going to compete with uh, you know, most of the big companies that produce for Starbucks. So what they do is basically they get together and say, OK, we're all going to when we get done with our coffee, we're going to put money together to make sure we send it to you know, the United States or wherever it's going on our own ships or on our own trucks, which they might have to spend some money for that. But we're also going to promise people that our coffee is totally organic, that it's a finer grade because we don't maybe use machines to grind it or something like that. And so they usually try to push a better product, too. They also promise if you put this sticker on, the other promise is you are being environmentally friendly. You are doing something sustainable. I already mentioned you're paying your workers a certain amount. They have to pay them a certain wage and you're investing in the community. This is something that has become popular. If you go to Starbucks, if you ask for it, they guarantee you they have fair trade certified coffee. However, like other products, fair trade coffee is going to be more expensive than the normal stuff. Because in order to bring more money back to these local communities, they're not farming at a large scale. 
It's more like organic in a way. Matter of fact, a lot of fair trade production is also organic production. Makes sense. Because that's something they can say, hey, we're giving you a better quality. That's why you're paying more for it. So if you pick up something in a store somewhere, arts and crafts are famous for using fair trade too. And it says, it got that fair trade sticker on there. Somebody brought me a, a chewing gum package a few years ago that had one of these on it. If you look at that, you know you're going to pay a little bit more money. But people around the world who are conscious about trying to help these people in less developed countries and small farmers and don't want to necessarily help these big commercial farms, they will maybe, if they can afford it, spend extra money to buy these products to support that. And it gives people that option. So in a global world, they have that. Uh, let me go up to the top here and show you a couple of the things about fair trade. Advantages, producers can earn enough money to at least have a you know, more reasonable standard of living. Fair trade is not going to make these small farmers rich. We're not talking about that much money. But we are talking about they may not have to sell their farm. They may not have to live in really bad. They may be able to send their kids to school. And here's why. Because if you do fair trade production, you promise to not use child labor. Beyond, I mean, like you can make your kids work two or three hours a day or something like that. But if the, if the kids can't be child labor, then they're more likely to be at school. And now think about what that does down the road economically for that family. Producers can afford to invest in their own farm because they're getting a little bit more money back. They can know they're likely going to have a farm next year that they can afford to, to go forward. Disadvantages, fair trade goods are more expensive. Not all stores carry them. Uh, there's some questions about long term viability because, you know, is it efficient enough in a world that needs more food and stuff like that? And again, it's not lifting people out of out of poverty. And there's even been some question about if all the types of farming being done on fair in fair trade agriculture is actually that that sustainable. Here is kind of a flyer from a fair trade organization. I'll leave it up here for you guys to look at. Basically, they're saying we're going to pay people a fair salary. We're going to empower women. I hadn't mentioned that one yet. Fair trade organizations also work really hard to encourage getting women involved in these cooperatives and women. In, and if you remember, in LDCs, one of the biggest challenges is getting women more involved in the regular economy. So they really try to empower women in this investment in local development, bringing money back local. OK, so they're selling global, but they're trying to bring money back local sustainability and then partnerships with each other. And there's a little signal, a symbol that you often see. Uh, one other thing I want to throw in, again, let me know if you have questions about fair trade. I don't think you would see a lot about it, but you might see uh, a reference to it, possibly in a prompt. One other thing I did want to bring up, what I'm hoping to do on Monday, we will Zoom on Friday as well at some point, maybe a couple times, but on Monday I'm hoping to do kind of a super Zoom day with um, several different hours throughout the day where we will do Zooms on different topics related to most likely scenarios on an FRQ, things that have been tested a lot in the past, things that I anticipate would be big level topics. So we will be looking at that, at doing that on Monday, uh, knowing most of your sleeping hours. We'll probably start that sometime in the early afternoon. And then uh, every hour or so, we'll kind of have a different topic. So it'll kind of be an exhaustive. We'll wrap things up later in the day. You don't have to participate in all of them. But boy, if I had any chance to, I would. Uh, I, this is the one last chance to kind of blitz some things in. And I'm letting you know today so some of you can talk to your parents because, well, you may need to talk to your parents. Let's just put it that way. OK, to let them know, hey, thousands of dollars are possibly on the line. And here's one last chance for me to try to work to get better. And again, that'll be Monday. We'll try to start it early afternoon and then it'll just run with some breaks uh, throughout the afternoon until we can. I'm working on a schedule or an idea of how it's going to go, but it'll be, pretty much be a commitment to be available. And again, you don't have to be at all of them, but I'd suggest if you can, um, but be available pretty much throughout the afternoon to, to log on and get in. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, again, Zooms today. I hope everybody's able to get involved and again, urge and encourage others.